I'm Terry Johnson and I'm the founder of the Harlem Candle Company and I am so excited to be here today to talk to the most incredible perfumer I know, Miss Kathleen Seleg, who is the perfumer and the genius behind a candle that we've called Seneca. Now we created Seneca in collaboration with the Metropolitan Museum of New York, which is inspired by Seneca Village. In November of 2021, the Metropolitan Museum of New York uh, launched a new exhibition called Before Yesterday We Could Fly, an Afrofuturist Period Room, which is inspired by Seneca Village. To give you a little background about Seneca Village, this was a 19th century settlement of mostly African-American landowners in Manhattan, which would become modern day Central Park. The area was about 40 acres between Central Park West and 7th Avenue, going from 82nd Street to 89th Street. This community thrived from 1825 until 1857 when they were forced to leave and their community was destroyed to make way for Central Park. So our Seneca candle pays homage to Seneca Village and evokes an alternate reality where this vibrant community continues to thrive. Now, Kathleen, do you remember when the Met curators first told us about this new exhibition? The team at the Met showed us a 3D presentation of the exhibition and the time travel began. We were transported in the home in the Seneca village. I remember this vibrant, the warmth of this kitchen on one side and on the other side, there was a modern, bright, futuristic, vintage living room with a TV with four sides, which we represent the spectator view of the exhibit. So my takeaway to create the scent was this contrast in time, which was fascinating and very inspiring. I remember you telling me both your father and your grandfather are painters. Um, how does their work and their creativity influence you as a perfumer, but more specifically for the creation of the Seneca candle? I grew up in a home with um, painter's atelier with a lot of colors and a lot of canvas. And I was immersed as a child already in, in this art and trying to recreate a subject and figure out how to, which technique to use. So my, my grandfather who would um, use a technique as a portrait, who really want to represent the reality, the essence of the subject. And my father would paint a surrealistic, futuristic view of the same subject, allowing for the spectator interpretation. So I wanted to use both these techniques to represent the Seneca village. So I used the, the, the more like real contrast of the Seneca village as it was at the time it existed and the more abstract futuristic view of the same Seneca village if it would have existed today. And this on top of that, it would as well um, allow the spectator to play a role in the creation as well. This is the unique element of all. The spectator will be included in the creation and in the scent. But now, how were you able to translate the past, the present, and the future with fragrance notes from a community that no longer exists to create such an evocative scent? So let's start with speaking about the past. So the past is if you will, a safe, the safe haven of this kitchen, in a home in a Seneca village with the warmth of this spiced black tea brewing and the aroma and the comfort it provides in, in the kitchen of the Seneca village at the time. The present is the actual location in Central Park of Seneca village, which we know exactly, as you mentioned, we know exactly where it was and we can Look at it, think about it and visit it. And it's, it's actually a beautiful made of white flower, white thyme, cedar leaves. So this is as well infused in the heart of the fragrance. So this is the, the location of Seneca Village in Central Park today. And the future is the smell of concrete. So why concrete? Because of the word concrete. So what are we going to take away from this exhibit, how it's going to change us, what are, are we concretely taking about knowing the existence of the Selenium Cavillage and what happened at the time, and as well the concrete for its uh, the scent itself, which 
it's a city scent, it's a urban scent. It could be the Seneca village as it expanded and that it built if it were existing today. It's as well a powerful idea of the spectator from the outside, outside of Central Park, back in the street, on the concrete, in the city, looking inside Central Park, outside of the Met, looking inside the Met at the exhibit. So back in the street, in the city, thinking about this unique experience and how it added a new dimension from the past into our future. Such an intoxicating and captivating scent. And I'm so happy that we were able to work on something and create something that's so special and so inspired with such meaning behind it. Now, everyone watching, I hope that you received the Lava Stone uh, bracelet scented with the Seneca scent so you can experience this for yourselves. Um, Kathleen, can you tell everyone a little bit about these bracelets? So the idea about um, using a bracelet to um, send the Lava Stone was um, that you could carry the scent with you wherever you go, re remember and reflect on the exhibit or remember the beautiful atmosphere of the candle in your home. So it's, uh, it's like uh, only for you, it's, uh, it's not on the market, so it's like especially for, for today. And it's done handmade by our beautiful team at Takazago in New York. We will all do each of us some scented bracelet for you. So that's, uh, that's exciting. Oh. Another thing we're really excited to share with you is that we collaborated with the Metropolitan Museum of New York on another candle. Um, this one is inspired by the Met Cloisters, which is located just north of Harlem, and it is a beautiful museum dedicated to European medieval art and architecture, and it has a gorgeous garden. Kathleen, please tell us how you created and how you were inspired by the Met Cloisters to create Medieval Garden. The, the Cloisters Garden inspired me to reconnect to the ancient practice of alchemy, combining rare and unique botanical scents. So I remember with Terry, we had a lot of ideas. We had a lot of different uh, proposals for this uh, candle, but it was so inspiring because this garden is an endless source of richness for creation. So the medieval garden candle came to life with serenity, spirituality, and joy. So this is what we want to give to you. This is the intention that we put in, in this candle. So I was inspired by the pomegranates of the unicorn tapestries of the cloisters, as well as the ancestral, highly spiritual scents of frankincense and myrrh. Then we were in the garden. What is the, if we want to take away one word about this garden will be serenity. So we have all these beautiful flowers, but you had to choose one. So we chose the rose de mai. To, for the finish and the heart of our magical set. This candle truly is spectacular and it's, it's quite spiritual in the way that it can really transport you to these ancient times. Um, I'm obsessed with it. Um, now, lastly, Catherine and I wanted to tell you, we wanted to share with you, we wanted you to be the first to know of what we've been working on for the past year. So up until now, the Harlem Candle Company has only done home fragrance. We've done candles, room sprays, and reed diffusers. Um, but our customers have been begging us to create a fine fragrance. Um, they want to wear the candles, they want to wear the stuff, but they cannot. But coming this spring, we are launching the Harlem Perfume Company. We have been working on some beautiful fragrances that are so inspired and, oh, Cannot wait to share them with you. So um, please stay tuned and thank you so much for watching and we can't wait to connect with you on all things fragrance in the future. Bye.